Uh, our next two speakers uh, were the champions for Holocaust education in Pennsylvania, Act 70. Uh, first off, we'll have Rhonda Fink Whitman, who led the way in making this happen and building a foundation. And after this will be Alan Silverberg. Please, Rhonda. I'm a little shorter than I was 10 years ago. I don't know how that happened. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Hi. Um, my name is Rhonda Fink Whitman. I'm the author of a book, 94 Maidens, and it's inspired by the true events of how my own mother and grandmother survived the Holocaust and how my grandfather sadly did not. Um, I also created this video called the Mandate Video. It's on YouTube, you can see it. It's uh, about 15 minutes long and it's me asking Pennsylvania college students at very prestigious universities what they know or don't know about the Holocaust. And uh, it's basically 15 minutes of I don't knows and a whole lot of incorrect answers. So that was in 2013. Fast forward to today and it feels pretty surreal to be standing here once again, a whole decade later in our beautiful state capital rotunda, talking to you about Holocaust education in Pennsylvania. I'm definitely having a deja vu moment. <laughs> So 10 years ago, I stood on this very spot making a similar plea because that mandate video propelled me into being the lead advocate on Pennsylvania's Holocaust education bill, which at the time we called Act 70. We did the best we could back then, but sadly, we came up short. We were looking for a full-blown 100% mandate. We started out strong, but in the end, there was a lot of pushback and we were forced to settle for what I call a mandate. True, sorry. Act 70 built curriculum and trained teachers, but it left Holocaust education voluntary and optional, as it already was and as it remains today. So here we are 10 years later, 10 years older, 10 years wiser, and thanks to Senator Mastriano, we have a chance to right that wrong. May we or shall we? That's the question. Stay strong. Back in 2014, when we passed Act 70, we in the Philadelphia area had around 30 plus survivors and a couple of World War II liberators that would regularly go out into the schools in the tri-state area and speak with our students. Do you know how many we have today? Give me a guess how many that can actually physically go to the schools and speak to the students. Three, I wish. We have one in the Philadelphia area, one. One sole survivor who in his late 80s is still able to go out to the schools in person, visit the kids, meet the kids, shake their hands, just like Sammy, tell their stories. We do have two or three others that can still zoom into a classroom and do it virtually. But my point is that 10 years is a long time to waste. After the passage of Act 70 in 2014, a magical thing happened. People from other states started reaching out to me and asking me to help them pass Holocaust Ed bills where they live. Of course, I was only too happy to help. But imagine my embarrassment when I would show them what we did here in Pennsylvania, and I would say, you can start here, but make yours better. And they did. We had a domino effect. And since then, I helped 17 more states pass full-blown 100% mandates. And what a win for their kids. But finally now, thanks to Senator Mastriano, we finally have a chance to make ours better in Pennsylvania. By the way, let's hear it for Senator Doug Mastriano, please. My goodness. Besides being a military hero, a state senator, an author like me, uh, do you know he has a doctorate in history? Hello? Right? He's the man. And four, count them, four master's degrees. Did I read that correctly? Are you the smartest guy in every room? Especially that one where you vote and pass bills and stuff? I know you are. He is, for sure. Where's your wife? She's nodding. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, 
So my book, 94 Maidens, is now used in schools to teach Holocaust education. And the local high school in my township where I live, uh, the teacher has the kids read it, and then she invites me in for a Q&A. Last time I went in, a young Hispanic girl raised her hand to tell me that she used to be very impatient with certain habits and quirks that her abuela would exhibit. But after reading my book, she now has more patience with her. She's actually taking the time to hear her stories and understand her better. And she wanted to thank me for that. And do you know what that is? That's Holocaust education. Another time at another school, a black senior came up to me to tell me that she was all in by page 20 because she said she could relate to what my family members were going through on those pages and she was able to draw parallels to what her ancestors had gone through during slavery. Do you know what that's called? That's called Holocaust education. A 14-year-old Catholic girl in Portland, Oregon, paired up with a 90-year-old Holocaust survivor after she heard him speak at her school. And with my help, the three of us went on to mandate Holocaust education in the state of Oregon in 2019. She wrote a book about it for young readers, and it was just recently published by Little Brown and Company. Do you know what that is? Say it with me. That's Holocaust education. There's a seventh grade English teacher in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, where I live, who shows my mandate video to her students after she has taught them a unit on the Holocaust. The kids gleefully shout out the answers to my questions. They feel empowered because they know the answers and the college kids in my video do not. The seventh graders go home and they proudly tell their parents that they're smarter than college kids. Tell me what that is, that's Holocaust education. You got this, Rebecca, <laughs> or Reba, Rebby. Um, I have a picture here. I hope you can see this. This is of my beautiful 85-year-old mom. By the way, she's the baby here, the baby. And this is her. This is her surrounded by students just last week in South Florida, where she lives. Um, she survived the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, the same camp that claimed the, claimed the life of Anne Frank and her sister Margot. And here in the photo, you can see my mom speaking about her experiences as a six-year-old girl in that concentration camp to a group of middle school students. Look at their faces. Look at the kids. Look at their faces. That tells you everything. This, my friends, is Holocaust education. Holocaust education is universal. It's bipartisan. And quite honestly, it's a no-brainer, right? My mother, the survivor, always taught me that it's never too late to right or wrong. And this here, this here, SB 1100, this is our opportunity. We know for a fact, and the studies have proven, that Holocaust education grows more empathetic, more tolerant, and more enlightened young adults. These days, we see a lot of unenlightenment on our college campuses and around the world. In fact, since October 7th, Unenlightenment on campus has risen by 700%. That's according to Hillel International, 700%. Can I put that into context for you? If you were to buy a new $30,000 car, it would now cost you $210,000. And that's not a Bentley or a Porsche, that's a Honda Civic. I grew up in a community of survivors like Sammy and I used to ask them all the time if they thought another Holocaust could occur. And they always answered, yes. I found that to be shocking. I didn't understand it. I didn't believe it then, but I believe it now. Since October 7th, I see it coming down the Pennsylvania Turnpike. I really do. There's only one way to fight this scourge of hate, and it's through education. So it's time. It's time for Pennsylvania to catch up to the other 22 fully mandated US states. I have a lot more experience at this now than I did 10 years ago. And I never would have imagined that I'd be standing here today revisiting Pennsylvania's Holocaust education laws, but thanks to Doug Mastriano, the good senator, we are, here we are. My journey has come full circle. I'm honored to be able to bring 10 more years of knowledge and experience to Senator Mastriano's table so that for Pennsylvania students, it was worth the wait. Now we can give our kids the best Holocaust education mandate because they deserve nothing less. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Mastriano. From me personally, from my husband, Mike, who's here with us today, from our last remaining survivors, including Sammy, my mom thanks you, from Florida, and four, on behalf of all 100% of Pennsylvania students across the Commonwealth for being our champ, you're our champion, and introducing Senate Bill 1100 so that we can finish what we started once and for all. I believe in second chances and I am most grateful for this one. Let's get her done. Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael Chai. God bless America, thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. For Rhonda and Alan, this is like back to the future, huh?